what's up guys? This is the Road from and I am back to bring you to the next episode of my Empire Total War Let's Play as the Empire of Portugal. And so to pick up where we left off, uh, we've actually been doing mostly just incremental gains in the Americas and we have taken Antigua. So what I want to do is keep this going and push on to Port Royal. But something else that's also quite tempting is to invade Britain because we've got all their ports covered. Economically, they're a bit screwed. They don't seem to be bothered about stopping me blockading all their ports. And Portsmouth is right here and exposed. Actually, I might just go ahead and break the dockyard. There we go. <laughs> just do a bit of that. Uh, because I've got a good army here in Paris, I'd like to build, or at least start building, a reinforcing army. If we need to, I can pull this force back to Paris. But yeah, I'm going to start building another army. So I can invade England, because you've got this one force here in Bristol, which is Irish Volunteers and Regiment of Horse. You've got a bit of a garrison up here in Scotland, which, got, which is Blackwatch and some clansmen or Highlander warbands. Then we can go and invade Ireland with more Irish Volunteers. I mean, this would be quite a significant capture. And the interesting thing is, it won't destroy Britain on the world stage, because they do own... Tunis and Valletta, so Britain itself won't actually be destroyed until this, until either of these, both these territories have been captured. And maybe they will, maybe they won't. I'm not super interested in pushing east into the Med just yet, uh, but I think this would be quite a good capture for us. Rather than me rambling on, let's just check the tech side. Nothing's going to immediately happen. We've got no cash, so let's hit end turn. Yeah, so they, they might push us out of some of our ports, but they don't seem overly bothered about actually killing us. But yeah, so what I mean is, if we, we can invade the British Isles, and what and that won't result in uh, the U the British colonies in America or, or India becoming independent, which is what I kind of want, actually. I'm not so bothered about it from the American front, because I can just invade them like any other territory, but in India... Ooh. But in India, uh, we see... Ooh, actually, hold on. See, they're allied with the French. Mm. It's tempting. Well, I'm viewing it from a lens of potential war with Prussia. But they're already at war with Prussia, and I don't want to upset Prussia by... Um, I don't want to upset Prussia by allying with an enemy. And yeah, where I was going with that is the fact that I want India to be as divided as long as possible. So I want to keep British territories in India British. And just to keep that division going, I'm not so bothered about Britain existing in the Americas because I can just invade them. And they've only got two, actually. They've only got Jamaica and um, uh, Port something or other. In the northwest, Port Rupert. Is it Port Rupert or Fort Rupert? One or the other. Uh, up in the northwest, and that would be interesting to get access to furs. But then that puts me in the Native American sphere of influence, which isn't a massive problem because I've got good artillery and I've got good firing drills. Yeah, let's just keep this going. I mean, I. I'm kind of on the fence about invading Britain because it's kind of interesting to keep major players. Well, I'm kind of, if I'm role playing this, kind of. Would Britain invade Portugal? Probably. If I've just taken Spain and France and we are still at war, then why would I not invade Britain? Because it's right here. So let's build two sloops. So what I'm going to do is take an infantry unit out. I don't know why I do this. I like the idea of getting infant getting generals from existing units, I suppose. Okay. Let's get one regiment of horse, one regiment of carabiner, carabiner. Three foot artillery. Two grenadiers. And some infantry. So it's gonna take a bit of time to get this army up together. I do want it to be a good army. Uh, to do so, what else can we do? 2,600. Well, I suppose the main thing is going to be over in America. We can upgrade the government building here in Panama. How's the road going? Okay, should we mm, bump that up or government building? No, 
I, I spent a lot of money on military on my, on military investment. I probably want to go economy. You're not struggling to export things. Panama. Here's Panama. Ah, not exported due to upgrade your ports. Okay, so Panama account accounts as exporting their goods from here, I believe. I think it's adjacent region. If they've got a port, they come they export it here. So if I upgrade Cartagena, that improves export capacity for Panama. Roads may be an aspect of it. But I think the challenge with roads is there's not over it doesn't overall explicitly outline the fact that it's having an impact. You want to stay in Antigua just for a little bit. Yeah, till we get a till we get a bit of uh, some upgrades on the uh, on the administration side, just to make sure they are super happy before we leave. But yeah, then we're gonna invade Jamaica, add some more sugar production, and we should be grand. The rest of the world is generally developing along the lines that you would normally expect. Austria is doing quite a good job at surviving. But yeah, in general, the European campaign map is is as we would expect at this time. No one's done anything super shocking. Like in my Mysore campaign, we've got the United Provinces have gone on an absolute tear. And it looks like the Austrians battered back one army, but they just lost to Zagreb to the Ottomans, so they are getting squeezed. They are getting squeezed. It's not a problem for us, not off the bat. Yeah, I want to focus on taking Britain and invading mainland America. That's what I would like to do. Stay out of European wars and expand my holdings. Because Britain is, is a really significant economic boon. If you can secure it. But I'm Catholic, so I'm, wherever they've got their churches, I'll replace them with Catholic buildings. Well, I'll replace one of them and hopefully I'll spawn a religious agent who can then convert the other. Ireland is Catholic, well, mixed Catholic anyway, so that shouldn't be a problem there. Interesting that Courland is down here. Must be raiding. Yeah, they are raiding. I'm at peace with the Barbary States, so they can do what they like. <laughs> At some point, I will march across the strait and take Morocco. I could just block it off and park a fleet right in the middle so they can't pathfind around it. Okay, let's upgrade Bill Bow to a trading port because we've already got a dockyard to the south. We've got a dockyard here in Brest. We probably aren't, when we take Portsmouth, we're probably not going to need this one either. But there we go, it begins. Uh, get to Mikile. Because yeah, I'm 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 content to let this take a bit of time. Right now we're in a position. We're in quite a useful position actually. We can afford to take a bit of a breather and expand. Ooh, we get howitzers. You'll get marines. We can expand our empire at will rather than be forced to do it. We're not in a war that we have to win right now. We are able to pick and choose. So I'm not going to upgrade anything. If I can get you guys out of Antigua. Minus eight. Okay. Yeah, so you're going to upgrade to governor's residence. I mean, I'm fairly sure neither of these have bonuses to... No. In which case, I'm going to recruit militia, and I probably don't have the... Oh, no, it's, just, it's, it's a money thing. I thought I might not have the population to expand that, but that's okay. So these two fifth rates, where's the best 
place to combine. Yeah, get you guys across. Ah, no replenishments, I have no money. Cool. Pretty sure my policies. So in theory, you wanna you want to kind of do this as soon as you can. So I'm going to do that because we've got yeah, it cuts my income down in half. But we should start really booming. Fleet arrives. Excellent. So at war with New Spain. I think that's probably the only thing we can get. There's no one here. I mean, the Danes are here. But we don't want a scrap of that. Hello. Sorry guys, I couldn't get to the microphone button quick enough. Uh, okay, that's unfortunate. Uh, coffee plantation, sugar plantation, iron masters works, and a magistrate. Okay, just keep the keep the upgrades coming. We're now at seven thousand eight hundred, so we're gonna really well. It's all about boosting our towns now. Two more technologies next turn. I mean, now's the best time to do it. If we're gonna... Oh, have you... yeah, you've brought your fleet back to Portsmouth? Yes, you have. Ah, okay. But I've still got um, Greenwich secured. I suppose if we're in this slightly quieter period now where we can afford to crank out just end turn after end turn after end turn then having low taxes and is ideal because then you can at least start the ball rolling and you can get towards the period of you know your <laughs> well get, get your towns growing as quickly as possible to get to useful high figures but yeah things are good i'm quite happy with how this is going now i feel quite i feel quite secure now especially knowing I can bump my taxes a small amount and then get a quite a significant bump up in my revenue if I need it. But taking Britain will be huge. Then we will invade the 13 colonies as a British ally. Okay, well, what are they offering? Mm hmm. In theory, none of this matters to me because I am. They're already at war with them. But I've got a lot of good trade partners. I'm not trading with Austria. I'm not trading with Sweden. I'm not trading with. Oh, I'm trading with Crimea. That's their enemy. Barbary States, blah, blah, blah. Uh, no. No, Russia. I appreciate the offers. I really do. But no. I think they explicitly want me to ally with them because I am. I could cause their, their potential enemies some danger to their west. So they won't all array themselves on Russia's front line. However, I am not interested in a Grand European War at this moment in time. Is the Georgian Navy. Württemberg's shuffling their troops around. The Barbary State's going to do... I mean, I would like to take the Barbary States because I'd really trim down the end turn phase. But again, I'm quite happy with the Barbary States not attacking my ports. <laughs> Let them sail around. Let them frustrate everyone else. They're not blocking my ports and cutting me off from trade income. Especially now I've reduced my budgets. Agents. So you guys go... Go over to Württemberg. Get some visibility on what's going on at Württemberg. So you're going to scamper your way up. So two units. Another six units on the way. So that will get you up 
to 11. Get you to 15. 16, 17, 18. Something like that will do. And then let's drop another port upgrade because those are useful. Especially in Paris because those are my most valuable. Well, it's an incredibly wealthy port, so it provides quite a useful immediate bonus. Down 7,000, yes, because I'm expanding my army quite significantly. This might change now, so I can take all of you except the militia out minus five yeah you're getting there though you're getting there let's have a peek at Jamaica okay decent army but it looks like it's probably going to be yeah just regular British colonial troops cool that's not going to be a problem Election results. Everyone's three star or better, so that's you can't really complain there. So we've got naval architecture advances, and we've got improved grape shot. We've got a flying shuttle, and we're about to go for punch card looms. So let's make sure that's what we want. Yeah, that's quite punch card looms. Quite a significant one for you to get. So you may go for. I mean, the wedge formation I'm not super bothered by, but it's, I get that plus one to command when leading cavalry units. Chain shot. Improved grape shot, rather. You're going to go... Do you go for that? I think you do. Well, copper bottoms is technically the more useful one. Because it gives us... I mean, increases recruitment cost, but, it, but our speed increases significantly. So let's do that. Overall, that's pretty good. Yep, yeah, just crank out the end turns. <laughs> we will get there. We will get there. Oh, Hanover's rebelled. I could do business with an independent Hanoverian kingdom if that is what they wish. That's something we could very easily sort out. Russia's on the move. Yeah, but just keep. We just need to keep on building our economy. Oh no, is Hanover already independent? No, they aren't. They are rebelling. Uh, or no, they might be independent, actually. Because they're not in the rebel end turn phase. Yeah, they are independent. I can see it at the top of the screen. Uh, ah, missed it. Damn it. I should imagine playing a Hanover campaign is probably very similar to a Westphalia campaign, that you have to pick on all these smaller German states. Ooh, 3,400. Big. Ah, oh, stuff's been blockaded. Yep, well, that sounds... Sounds about right. In which case, then. Explicitly economy spending. And Gibraltar's starting to get some decent cash now. Public servant dies. Okay, we'll sort that out soon. I mean, it's a bit of a bummer. Maybe ship you goes off to America. Got vineyards, commercial port of Cartagena, government chambers in Bogota, trading port in Bilbao. So let's go to the Americas, see if we can find. I mean, Panama can get better roads, we know that. Caracas can't. Okay, let's get some new roads in Panama. Yeah, it's the start of a new army, but we can't afford to build up two armies at once. Gonna get joint stock companies next turn, which is gonna be quite useful. Then you're gonna hop over to separation of powers. It would be useful to upgrade 
Orléans. That doesn't look like that's going to happen anytime soon. You keep on pushing up. So we've got five units under recruitment in Paris. I think we might be one unit sh short, maybe. No, we won't. Two more units plus five from Paris. That's fine. Uh, they're finally going <laughs> to... Let's see how many male my militia can kill. 71 militia versus... <laughs> they killed 235 men. Ah, they, see, they finally realised... Hang on a minute. This is actually... This is devastating to my economy. But don't worry. We are imminently about to attack. Although, to be honest, Edward Russell, your navy's not in good shape. So... <laughs> Who are you to make such a demand? Never! They demand peace and they want me to give them Gibraltar and Sardinia. I think not, Britain. We are building an army specifically to invade you. The Dutch have declared war on me. Very well. We must match their force. Mughals refuse to join me, but the Savoyard have joined me. Three and a half grand for a bunch of tech. Yes. Especially because my, I'm actually scraping the barrel now. I'm starting to scrape the barrel with my... Uh, with my budget. Poland wants an alliance. Ironic, really, that they want to ally with us. And as does Russia. They've just taken Prussian territory. Interesting. Very Interesting. Yeah, within a turn or two, we'll be invading Britain. And then hopefully in, in a turn or two, Antigua will be okay with us. Yeah, they've done it again. But this time they're demanding me... I pay them my treasury, which I've just got. Nope. Nope, nope, nope. There is that... Swedish force that's in one of my trade zones that's raiding it and I would like to try and send my navy in to destroy that fleet. Oh, go on then. The Mughals offering me an alliance and they're going to give me a grand to do it. Very well. I suppose we're friends again. And then the Barbaries are going to Barbary. Army destroyed. Yeah, that's quite a significant overestimate. So you guys are in. Uh, one more turn. Although, to be honest, could I nick? But now I particularly want Fusiliers because I haven't recruited Fusiliers in a while and I want them to go into this army to add a bit more variety. Although they're fairly variety. Fairly mixed up. Nah. Let's wait. Hanover's destroyed. Alliance between Portugal and the Mughal Empire is broken. We've got joint stock companies and you've gone straight on separation of powers, which is exactly what I want. Wealth of Nations is very good, but let's, let's incrementally crank up the board. So let's build... Upgrade this college to a classical university because they can handle the upset. 3,200, so it's here. Fifth, fifth light galley. I'm fairly sure you guys are my actual trade ships. Yeah. Really, it's the fleet that I've sent to America now that I would like to... I would like to divvy up and do stuff. So you guys get out. Minus three. Comes minus two. One more turn and they're ready. Okay, good stuff. Okay, one more turn generally. Yeah, so the Dutch have declared war on me. Just because they're angry. If they take Brussels, then I'll push straight through towards Amsterdam. That's just what's going to happen. I'm not going to invade. 
Gonna leave them to it. See, we can just about squeak out of the harbour and get to Greenwich. So let's hit end turn. I may want to use my navy to blockade Portsmouth to force them to do battle. Okay, that's what I wanted. I didn't mind them going back to London to garrison the city. That was completely fine. And especially the next turn, we should be getting our... Oh, hello. Next turn, we should be getting our Fusiliers so we can deploy them, cross the channel, attack London. And jobs are good in. And then the idea would be to turtle again somewhat in Europe. I mean, I do want it to be quite... Not lethar lethargic, that's the wrong word, but I mean... More conservative in Europe. Because ideally I want to be focusing on the Americas. I want to start cranking out my trade economy and I want to be building, getting more resources. Especially now when they're the most useful. Because it takes a long time to build up a tax base. But when you've got a large tax base that's just continuously growing each turn... The fluctuations that come with trade goods just kind of goes away and becomes less of an importance, at least in my opinion. Trade is always worth money, but they can never, never impact your tax base. <laughs> I mean, obviously, unless you lose territories, but it means they, they could cut you off from all of your trade and blockade all of your ports, and you can just sit there and go, I don't care, because I'm still earning 40, 50 grand from my taxes so i don't care you can you can do that as much as you like and i'll get around to it when i want to sweden's invading the mainland interesting gotta be careful of valetta because they could fire a british army actually at me from the med and it would catch me quite flat-footed Could put them under blockade. But again, I think it comes down to the fact that you you just need way more navies than you can get your hands on. <laughs> I've got my main navy. Oh, there's someone there. I've got my main navy sat blocking the Strait of Gibraltar. Wedge formation. Good. But what this means, for example, is that that fleet there means that Britain cannot ship troops back to their homeland. Okay, so upgrade your dockyard to a dry dock, because I've had access to that for a while, but I haven't actually done it. Okay, right, I'm not going to wait for the second no. second set of fusiliers. We're going to take a unit of line infantry experts. Ah. Veteran line infantry. You make way. Fun. You men embark. Claudio Catarino. Then we attack. Maintain siege for now, just to make sure I get my guy inside. And let's take London. We're going to attack London. They've got a... It's mostly those regular troops plus the volunteers. They've got some mortars because we're attacking a city. But they have no defences, so we are going to storm forward. We're going to storm forward and take them. Take the city. We might have to hold on to it for a little bit because we've only got a bit of cash to repair buildings and so on. But I do want to get my dry dock kicked off rapidly. Ooh, this is a lovely map. Deploy the guns. I mean, it is the best. The best bit of terrain. They're probably going to trundle forward a bit. So let's put... Aid to cover the guns. Some men are going to advance through the town. My irregulars are going to push down the right flank. Two units plus my fusiliers in reserve. Skirmishes and I'm supposed to put my skirmishes and my hussars on the right flank. And my regiment of horse, though they're, they're a bit more of a want to a better word, fighty cav. Get my guns up on the hill. Oh, 
are going to want to drive forward rapidly. Cavalry here. Yeah, because of that. Ah, I've got to actually... Actually... That would work. Cavalry's a bit isolated. So we're going to need our right flank to push up. Really. Our right flank's going to push up. My infantry's going to slowly squeak out of these buildings. Looks like they are abandoning the right flank, which is good. And we do want to push up. Run my skirmishes for run my mounted skirmishes forward because they the general has exposed himself. Fire! There we go. Killed seven. These guys are going to be absolutely knackered. Okay, form up. I hear a charge. Regiment of horse. Hey, do what you like. Huzzah! I just thought they were going for my skirmishes. That's the traditional approach. Make sure my you guys fire it well off. Yeah, we should be able to take out those fellas quite nicely. So this is where the problems could arise. You men form square in the town. You men form up in... Eh, don't form up. Expected something like that to happen. The new bayonet charge into the flank. I mean, they're only militia. Don't really care a huge amount about them. Human advance. Human maintain the coherency of your squares. You guys are going to take them out quite nicely. Skirmishers. Cavalry. Uh, you guys. Yeah, you're under fire. Oh, is it the mortars that you don't like? Probably. It's always the mortars people don't like. You can fire it well off. Hussars against the general's bodyguard. Carabiner against the enemy. Against the enemy artillery. Do they have fire by rank? No, they don't. But my guys are still wavering. You guys pull back. Yeah. Okay, get my cavalry out there on the rear. 
Yeah, I thought you'd come back. I think my trip through the town just getting bogged down. Too bogged down. Okay, let's get one of my gorillas into the farmhouse. You man, go for the guns. Kill the enemy general. My grenadiers are up, are up front and not super happy. Okay, there we go. This is part of the challenge of fighting in the towns. You don't get to deploy your men the way you would like. Sars go into the citizenry, Carabina go for the file lock arm citizenry. Fusiliers haven't been touched. Let's throw a regiment of foot in. These grenadiers over here. Skirmishes are doing a good job. You guys go for the 18th regiment. Yeah, you go skirmish against the militia to the rear. I think even I think it's I guess it comes down to the initial volley of a militia is still technically a dangerous thing. You men go for the Irish volunteers. One of you men come over here to deal with the. Militia. Okay, get in. There we go. You're both going to knock down that unit there. I mean, my gunners haven't been super useful, but I bet, they, I bet it's difficult for them to see anything. Push on. This has been a lot dirtier than I thought it was going to be. But then again, this is fighting in towns. This is this is why I normally go. Nah, fighting in towns is usually a bad idea. If you've got the firepower advantage, you may as well use it. Guns attack the 23rd. It's four of you guys back. Get them within close within range of the town. Generally, you guys are good. Have we got cavalry? Okay, we somehow we are selecting a cavalry unit. New men charge them in the rear. My infantry's back. Yeah, so get these guys within range of the farmhouse and they'll start to get engaged from my other unit of skirmishers. Unless they'd much rather shoot into the combat. It's another British army. Another British unit destroyed. Push my line up the flank. So this is a moment where howitz has become much more useful than foot artillery. You can't actually do much damage to them because the hill's in the way. Uh, there's a British unit that's coming back. You men all form up together. If I make you irregulars fire at will off and then fire at will on, I was curious if they'd run around the house and re redeploy themselves, but apparently not. Okay, 
expat infantry engage because they're right there. There's another unit of armed citizenry coming back. All my guns pack that unit of armed citizenry. Alright, some units back here that fled. Volley away. There you go, grenadiers are in here as well. Don't worry, you'll be waving for wavering a lot less in a minute. Charge my general in, cease fire the guns. Charge in the flank. Very messy battle. Incredibly messy. There you go. The cavalry should even this out a bit. Ex-pad infantry with your green trousers. Charge! Steady. Shaken. Charge! This unit's holding on quite so diligently. So how many men have got? 60 men. Okay, now they're wavering. Slaughter them all. In a way, though, it's a bit thematic. Because we've got a, a brand new army engaging a experienced enemy in their capital yeah see we lost a thousand men but we took the city so they don't like us off the bat minus five okay let's get rid of cambridge that will generally fit that will fix it can't upgrade somerset house we can upgrade or re repair the royal observatory and their artillery building actually Let's not do any of that except for the Royal Observatory because that gets us happiness bonuses, but instead spend the extra one and a half grand on replenishment. Because I don't want to exempt them from tax because... Actually, did I exempt them from tax? No. Ah, actually, we don't get that much. Oh, because the tax Somerset House is damaged. We don't get as much as we would like. So wedge formation has been researched. You've gone socket bayonet, which I don't really want. Instead, go for... Well, that gets a military academy. More units. That might be good. Actually, let's keep doing that. Yeah, we've got Cambridge. I don't think it'll make a difference, but let's just crank away at, at something for a turn. We don't have the money to invade or to do anything here yet against Jamaica, so let's hit end turn. <laughs> yeah, fortifying Edinburgh. Ooh, hello. Oh my god. Where'd you get that? <laughs> Heavy first rate ship of the line. Yeah, but we'll carry on. <laughs> I'm not going to lose a bunch of ships attacking one heavy first rate. No way. Where the hell did they get that? Well, they must have built it, I suppose. This is why we need dry docks. Because we need dry docks. That gets us second and third rates. <laughs> Heavy first rate ship of the line. Or like one broadside. That will, that will like knacker a fourth and a fifth rate. To the point where if they hit another broadside. Okay we're just going to run away. Those big ships are real dangerous. 
if they were attacking my like a key port, like they were, they are blockading one of my ports in Spain. But if they were attacking an actual valuable port, then sure, that's a problem. But nah, we can leave them be for now. Oh, I've got a rake in Sardinia. Well, they're probably going to stay there until I get a ship to transport them out. Yeah, they've raided Liverpool. That's okay, but. My main focus, I think, has got to be on replenishing the rest of my army. Because these guys can raid as much as they like. I need my army to be in good shape. Then I need to repair my main building. Like, look at that. <laughs> Heavy first rate. And a, a third rate. Like, have they not got, have they got a steam dry dock? Like a dockyard. Fisheries. Various bits and pieces. Go after Glasgow. But on Malta, I've got a naval hospital. Yeah, but that doesn't. Naval hospitals don't get you steam dry docks. Yeah, well, how about it? Okay, you can go back to West Africa, because that's where there is a, a Dutch fleet you can attack. But apart from that, there's not more we can do. Iron workshops in Andorra, naval board in Madrid, and cobble roads in Panama, so at least that gets us marines. Oh no, we have to build the right level of this. I imagine. No, we don't. The naval board. Oh, reform naval administration. I see. Do you not even get early marines? Apparently not. At least we get better marines. Okay. At some point I grade you to modern university. That requires Bill of Rights. Rights of Man, that's the one. Okay. Oh, we can repair Greenwich. Okay, let's do that. Retirar! I don't mind them raiding. Raid as much as they like. I can repair it all. I need my army to be in good strength. Then I can just push north towards Scotland and fill out any... Ooh, there's a Dutch fleet. They're going to invade somewhere. Ah, you want to go after my one little sloop. Let's see if they kill anything. Damn. Didn't do anything. Go on then. Go for Brussels and I'll immediately stomp on your head. Has Austria taken... Austria's taken... Courland, maybe? Huh. Well, I like seeing a strong... Austria. Looks like there might be a rebel territory there. Because that's a different... That's definitely grey compared to a brown. Hmm. Very curious. But yeah. Yep, so I'm sorry this one's been a long uh, series of cranking out turns, but sometimes, you know, there's only there's only so many offensives you can support in one go. You have to just let things happen. And don't start doing this to me, Ottoman Empire. Otherwise I'm going to have it... <laughs> I'm going to be cutting so many times. Five, four, three... There we go. Fear will keep them in line. <laughs> okay. I mean, if Savoy wants to invade someone, that's fine. The Native Americans that need to be dealt with at some point. Trade with them. Yeah, go on then. I'll take it. Okay. Enemy raid. Oxford. So I think we need to then repair Somerset House. I can dispatch cavalry forward to deal with that raiding unit of enemy cavalry. Four hundred and 
Can't recruit militia, can't recruit anything. Okay. Class tax, lower class tax, government building zero, government administration minus point four. In two turns we'll have Swansea, but we just don't have Okay, yeah, so Crank those numbers up. <laughs> Here we go. I, I need I need cash. I need cash. I can get rid of this college divinity too. Ah, oh, they didn't like the fact that I might move my cavalry out. They're right on the cusp. So, yeah, I need to keep that resistance to foreign occupation. Well, uh, cranking out the turns is useful from that perspective, because it means they do... Oh, back to raiding. It means, at least, we are getting closer to being able to move my entire army out. I'm curious to see where that Dutch army goes. Because there's an entire embarked army somewhere in the world. I mean, they'll be going somewhere in the Americas. I've got that. In a way, it's fortunate I've got an army sat in my Caribbean islands doing nothing. It looks like there's been a bit of an offensive going off in the east, and Prussia is reinforcing it quite significantly. Maybe it's a Russian counterattack. Who knows? Yeah, with nine grand, that'll be enough to well, start to recruit some militia, guard some of my ports, and then send my army north to consolidate my holding of the British Isles. And then, to be honest, once we're taking the British Isles, we can land, take the Netherlands, retreat, and then give the Netherlands to someone like... Ooh, give the Netherlands to Savoy. They've been a good ally of us they joined us in our war against the dutch and i'm not interested in taking i'm not interested in taking the netherlands because the netherlands is would be a pocket behind enemy lines i will give it to savoy but then that means if the savoy are attacked i will defend them regardless of who it is that attacks them because when people have been good allies to me i like to keep them i like to to behave as though in real life, this is like a real life relationship. I'm like, nah, they've been there by my side. They back me. When even the Mughal Empire didn't back me against the Dutch, they abandoned me and left me. So yeah, why not? Why shouldn't Savoy get some get some uh, perks for being a stalwart ally? So let's prepare the rest of this. Let's get a. Sloop built here. So what happens if I move my entire army out? Minus two. That's pretty good. So I'll get a bunch of militia. Because two turns technically should be okay. So they might... They'll, they'll write a letter of demands. Then next turn they'll be set. Could be... Repairing the theatre would also be a smart investment so oxford let's go to church school e-men push up and attack that army there keep the reinforcement going keep driving towards edinburgh yeah i do just want yeah just one turn of turn of militia is good because that'll they'll then hold Portsmouth. We don't have anyone else I can send to hold Portsmouth, do I? Nope. Ooh, new town emerges. Ah, oh, and you're also here. You could fight the Dutch because they want two fifth rates. New town emerges. Okay, I suppose I can build a new town. Because whatever happens, we're not going to be able to repair those ships to the south anytime soon let's go get and even though this will make the part overrun i will actually fight it because you guys haven't had a you guys haven't had much action this episode so let's do it two fifth rates and a 
a nothing ship. So yeah, bring the capture the fifth rates. Yeah, fourth, fourth, fifth, 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 sixth. Let's take the Jebek. Line of stern. Let's go get him. It was a light galley. <laughs> I've got two guns aside. Actually, they've only got one gun. They've only got two guns overall. And there. Well, their fifth rates are in good shape. But their light galley. I mean, we're going to sell this to, to local Portuguese fishingmen. It will be flogged. To, uh, to support our booming s uh, sardine trade. Kroon, Vogel, and East. East, e East. If that's even hard to pronounce, which it probably isn't. Unlike San Jose and Nossa Senhora de Mer Merces, 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 <laughs> Sao Pedro, Proper good Christian ships. They may get the first shot off, but they will not get the last. So I'm just going to play this speed this up just a little bit. There you go. And you guys switch to canister shot. Switch to uh, chain shot. Same with you. Send my fifth rates or dispatch my fifth rates out from the back of the fleet. Castilia. Actually, it's probably best if you turn that away. Full speed. You'll fire a volley into the east, and then you're going to cut off Kroon Vogel. Missing masters down. Ha, we've dismasted the light galley. Triton, the fifth rate is coming in from the rear. Borod Celebes, the sixth rate, is getting hit from the front. The Zhebek is also going to cut along this direction. You men drop anchor because you've got a good shot there. You just sail straight to get out of the firing line. on chipping away. You might just fire chain shot, uh, round shots, slam shots into her belly. There we go. Kroon Vogel's lost there. Mainmast. You need to know, you fight change your head on. Fire as she bears. Miz and Masters down. Here, yeah, round shot for days, so we're not going to need to sink any more ships. My fourth rate is going to board the light galley. Kroon Vogel surrendered. East is surrendered. The light galley's wavering. But we're coming in. 
And the Lygalis surrendered. Excellent. Yeah, we'll take the fifths into our service, because why not? Close victory. Pa! Yeah, we'll take the fifths into our service. The light galley will be cashed in. Not that it's going to get as much cash. Yeah, 285 prize Probably money. But still, expanding the Dutch, expanding the Portuguese fleet at the cost of another. God like that. Technically speaking, I could have kept the light galley and dropped them on a trade zone. That would have been smart. Oh well. Can't ever accuse me of doing smart things. Okay, there we go. Because we're right at the end, towards the end of the episode, I should say. Let's get rid of the fishery. Get rid of the fishery, build it as a trade port. Um, because we're at the end of the episode, I am going to hit end. I'll probably get one more end turn out. So we're going to get separation of powers. We're going to get improved grape shot. Why not? All the arms four away from socket bayonet. Yeah, you got some stuff to work out, Britain. I'm coming to get you. I'm coming. I'm coming to get you. Oh, they're going to attack my trade fleets. What an interesting choice. Withdraw. Just try spread them out so they can't attack all of my ships at once. So they lost five ships against my one galley. Go on. Oh, Spain's going to steal my trade trade spot. Yeah, I need more ships. I need fleets capable of protecting the my trade zones. Dang, nabbit. I should probably try and take out the heavy first rate, but it's too, it's so big, I at least want some second rates. I at least want some second rates. Or alternatively, just ignore it, take Scotland and Ireland, and then try and see if I can force peace with Britain, because they've only got Africa, or Tunisia, and Malta left. So I think once they lose the British Isles, they might be in quite a good spot to go for a peace deal. Or I could take Scotland and make them and <laughs> force them into force them into peace. Let's see, okay, you can have Ireland as well. Nah, take just take the territory. Take all of it. Don't give them an opportunity to rebuild their strength. I really like that Savoy's arming up. Well, in theory. They've been a good ally, so they shouldn't screw me over and attack me, stab me in the back, but who knows, maybe they will. If they do, then so long your Dutch reward. No reward for you. Here's the Georgian, maybe. Ten grand. A suspicious death. Ah, they've killed my general. Fine. Matthias Pinto. So what they've done by pulling out of Scotland, I'm going to put the capital under city city under siege or demand the surrender. Nope. Put them under siege. Force them to come attack me, and then I'll defend them and blow them to pieces. I suppose mil militia isn't really what I want. Yeah, militia isn't really what I want, but we're up to making serious bank. So fleet destroyed. No, they took my galley into in, they get my galleon into their service. Okay. It's gonna suck, but combine my ships together to dissuade them from attacking. Excellent. I've got two slots, so let's get it. Let's get two second rate ships of the line. Then we'll attack Aaron Villiers. Because they, well, they do have a heavy first rate and a third rate. 
Big ships are scary. 2300. Crane bridge to a craft weaver, and let's get one unit of light infantry to send north. Although, actually, you guys need to be prepared. I suppose technically, you don't need to be repaired. Let's get rid of that recruitment. Yeah, that'll be. Enough. One turn, we'll see you guys right. Then we'll ship you back across the sea. The workers are on strike in England, but now they're not. And now they're paying in towards our empire. And one more turn to Swansea's develop. That'll be another town. But yeah, but that's not a bad way to kick off. Well, that's not a bad way to carry on doing what we're doing. So, thanks for watching, guys. Hope you've enjoyed. And we'll see you next time for the continuing adventures of Portugal. Cheers, everyone. <laughs>